Hello, I'm Russell Brand. This is the True's True News, news you can trust. You might be aware of the recent document that, uh, to a degree, uncovered CIA torture activities. Here with me is Mozambique. What's your involvement in the CIA torture document? Why are you interested in this? Well, one of the things that happened, of course, is that I was detained um, in Guantanamo and Bagram by the US uh, uh, military authorities. I was questioned and uh, interrogated by the CIA. The CIA threatened to send me to either Egypt or to Syria if I didn't cooperate. Um, so that was the process of, of my involvement initially with, with being held by the US. How did you end up being in Guantanamo Bay? What happened to you? Well, I was working in, my, um, in Afghanistan in 2001 and 2 uh, with my family. I lived in, in Kabul. Uh, we remained there working on a project to build a school for girls. Uh, when the US invasion began, um, we evacuated to Pakistan where I have relatives. And on the night of the 31st of January 2002, there was a knock on my door. Uh, I opened the door and was um, faced by numerous people with guns. One put a gun to my head, pushed me onto the ground, shackled my hands behind my back and carried me into the back of a vehicle, hooded me. And then later I learned that the people who took me were CIA and Pakistani intelligence agents. I've never been convicted of any crime at all. Um, I'm a free man. I've won an out-of-court settlement against the government for being complicit in my torture and the torture of other people. So, uh, you know, I'm sitting here in front of you as a free man. We're going to have a look at, um, I think this is Dick Cheney, isn't it? It is indeed. Dick Cheney is, uh, and what was Dick J Cheney's job during the time that you got bundled in the back of a van with a gun at your head? Well, he says in a film called Taxi to the Dark Side, which won the Oscar for Best Documentary in 2008, that we will have to operate in the dark side, in the shadows. And what he was saying essentially is that he will be sending the CIA and the military intelligence services to operate in places outside of the law. So they explicitly admit that they're operating outside the law? Absolutely. He was the architect. He was one of the major architects. And one thing that's really important, the uh, senior legal, legal advisors to the Bush administration said that if it's not organ failure or death, it's not torture. If it's not organ failure and it's not death, it's not torture. This man looks like a kindly uncle. It's Dick Cheney. Let's see what he's got to say. Former Vice President Dick Cheney unwavering in his support for the harsh interrogation tactics that happened on his watch. I'd do it again in a minute. So uh, Dick Cheney, they're making it very clear that he has no regrets about torture tactics. Cheney argued the methods, including prolonged periods of waterboarding, were necessary in the wake of the September 11th attacks. The language that you mentioned in the important part, Mozan, language is so integral to our understanding of these kind of issues. For mm. quite a long while, I thought waterboarding was just a, a hobby. <laughs> it's like, it's just kind of, oh, they're doing some waterboarding. Oh, that's nice. They'll need some time off between the torture they're undergoing. Well, I mean, that's really important because that's what it is. It's a manipulation of language. It sounds okay until you, 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 you break down what it is. Um, when they talk about extraordinary rendition, it, it makes it sound like a rendition of Beethoven's Fifth or something. But it's yeah, not. I thought it was like a duet album. But exactly. what is extraordinary but, but it's rendition? Not. It's kidnap. It's... Um, <laughs> It's false imprisonment and it's torture. And insisted the procedures were not torture. You can't just insist things are not torture if they are. What kind of things did you undergo in Guantanamo and the place that's worse than that in Bagra? Well, one of the things that they did to me was to tie my hands behind my back to my legs, uh, punch me and kick me, threaten uh, me with pictures of my family in front of me, waving them, saying, uh, with the sounds of a woman screaming next door, they said, um, which they led me to believe was my wife being tortured. Uh, and they said, what do you think's happened to your family? Where do you think they're going to end up? That was just one snapshot of the torture. It lasted uh, intermittently for, for, for three years. How do you ever begin to reconcile those kind of experiences with being a normal human and being in the world ever again? Well, I don't know if there's such a thing as normality anymore, but I, I will say that one of the things that happened, I became a campaigner for justice and, and the rights of the prisoners as a result of this. So this, this episode in my life has made me who I am today. Sometimes I think I've had quite a hard life just because I didn't enjoy school much. <laughs> you had to be tortured. Sunlight at the CIA? I'm sorry, that's one place I don't need sunlight. I don't think they need to give me a lot of transparency at the CIA. Look, thousands of Americans were killed after 9-11. The Bush administration did what the American public wanted, and that was do whatever it takes to keep us safe. What I'm interested in on the truth is how these how certain narratives become acceptable. Like if you watch TV and you just hear someone say, was 9-11 wrong? Should we be able to do whatever we want? It's kind of like a picture is built. And the information that's excluded 
prevents us from having any kind of real traction, any proper relationship with reality. Mm. I found this very severe in the instance that you're describing, but throughout media and throughout the authoritative systems that control us, there's this disjunct of truth. There's a complete lack of truth. So our ability to understand, for example, why the, the, the continuing military activity uh, in, in the Middle East and the justification for the Second Gulf War, like we, uh, the way these situations explo explain to us is extremely duplicitous, is that right? Well, look, let me just tell you something. When I was in the Bagram facility being interrogated by the CIA, they said, look, if you don't cooperate with us, we're going to send you either to Syria or to Egypt. And they said they sent a man called Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi, who was an al-Qaeda captain. Say that name again. Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi. Al-Libi, yeah, he's from Libya. Um, so they said, we're going to send you to Egypt like we sent him to Egypt. And there I learned later that he gave a confession that he was, uh, that al-Qaeda was working with Saddam Hussein on obtaining weapons of mass destruction. Colin Powell took that confession, that false confession under torture, to the UN Security Council in 2003 to argue for a case of war in Iraq. So we entered Iraq as a result of that tortured testimony. Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi then was sent to Libya, to Gaddafi, and turned up dead in his cell in 2009. There's never been an investigation in this case, and this is essentially why we went to war in Iraq. The man who provided the information that meant we went to Iraq to war was tortured when he gave that information, and killed before he could explain whether or not the torture contributed to him saying it. Exactly. These terror tactics have been stopped because as a country we decided we are better than this, so we stopped them. Which is my point. Then why are we putting out this memo? The United States of America is awesome. We are awesome. <laughs> you can't just say we're awesome on the news, so that's the end of it. What about the torture? Most of them got kidnapped out of Pakistan. We're awesome. But we've had this discussion. We've closed the book on it and we've stopped doing it. And the reason they want to have this discussion is not to show how awesome we we are. This administration wants to have this discussion to show us how we're not awesome. This, there's a few points, Mozam, that I'd like to cover. Uh, but I suppose because of British involvement, our hands are dirty in all this, aren't they? Exactly how are Britain contaminated well, by all this? Well, look, Britain was involved. The MI5 and MI6 agents were there physically, in my case. So the British government has, has known this all along. You know, this CIA torture report is only talking about 119 people. There was more than 119 people held in the war on terror. There are thousands. Really? Yeah, thousands, thousands are just not being covered. So this, even this report is just a sketchy little pipsqueak fart of data to sort of placate people. Yeah. Do the American people have a right to know? Jesse, your thought? I don't want to know about it. I think people do nasty things in the dark, especially after a terrorist attack. If I was to kidnap somebody you, if I was to torture you, if Can I was to force you in prison, you, right. um, I'd be prosecuted by the law. You right, not, not at the moment, you might not. <laughs> you might be applauded. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, that's what it is. That's what the government has done. It has been involved in kidnap, torture, false imprisonment, which are crimes. But all of this has been um, trampled over because we've said it's all in the name of national security. And all it's done is create more torture and more war based on torture. If we have a criminal government, then none of us are free. We're all, if our freedom is contingent on total compliance, then none of us are free. If people are being tortured in our names or in the names of the institutions that govern us, then none of us are free. It's ironic that the people that do terror best are the people that decide what terror is. This administration is doing this because they're the same administration that goes on these apology tours, because they believe naively that if we can just shame ourselves and convince the world how horrible we are and put us on a moral equivalency with all these other countries, then maybe they will stop beheading Americans and putting our heads on sticks. What should people look at to learn more about this complex and difficult issue that we can't do justice to in the limited time frame? Well, if you go to the website cageuk.org, you'll see... Uh, Cageuk.org, yeah. Uh, it is a website, which is, which is my organisation that has been cataloguing all of the cases of anti-terror legislation, of all the bad uh, law that's been passing, being passed through, uh, all the CIA torture reports, you can see all of that. If you want to learn more of these issues, go and look at cageuk.org and also just watch out who you trust. Alternatively, you could just put on your TV set, watch Fox News or one of them other things and just do as you're told. If you want true news, subscribe here, subscribe here. a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Truths is like the news. If the news was true, I want some truths. Let's have some truths.